The school is now at high. The production clue. The cast is comprised of the students of advanced drama, an elite ensemble of the top actors Nawat has to offer. The members know that they are the best. Their arrogance understandable. Each has used skill, talent, and determination to achieve their status. The road to advanced drama is difficult, extensive, and intimidating. Each new season brings with it a wave of applicants, a few dozen hopefuls who compete for one of only a handful of openings. The requirements to be an advanced drama student include Drama 1, Drama 2, and approval from the director to audition for the class. The audition process always includes the delivery of a two to three minute monologue and a cold read from an unfamiliar script. Each potential is judged by the current senior members of the group as well as the director. Most do not gain entrance into the class. Those who do constitute the best of the best. These elite actors develop a level of camaraderie not seen in most social environments. I really like the close-knit community that we all have and the friendships that we make. It's like a little club. Tonight, Sideline explores the social perspectives of the 2005 advanced drama class and the cast of Clue. This is the theater of Nawat High School. It is where the major productions here are assembled. As the cast and crew started work on the spring play, Sodline began to investigate the social dynamics of the production and the kinds of people who come together to bring a play, such as Clue, to the stage. There are two sophomores, one junior, and twelve seniors. Through interviewing the members of the class and observing the behavior of the group, we have developed a better understanding of how this cast works together. The actors and actresses are like the part of the production that the audience sees and like like is entertained by. And that's like what the audience sees of the production. And then there's the directors who are like huge and like like they probably have a lot more influence than anybody else in the entire like process of producing a play or whatever because like they get to incorporate their personality a lot more. Whereas the actors just have to follow their directions. And I mean, you like as an actor, you can put your personality in it, but the director has, I mean, they have a lot of say in what goes on. And then the tech crew is amazing and does like lights and set and stuff. And like, they don't usually, like, I mean, the directors are acknowledged and the tech crew is, but like, they don't usually get as much acknowledgement and credit for what they do, but they're amazing. Another important group associated with advanced drama is the tech crew, the men in black. They are the ones who construct and move the sets, adjust the lighting array to give the show a stronger effect, and handle the sound effects. While they too are not typically seen, the production could not be possible without them. The director gets everything together, they block it, they usually are the main influence in how the play goes. The actors are the ones who act, and the tech crew people are the ones that make everything go smoothly, build the set. I don't, they're a very important part of the program. And from a functional perspective, I would have to say that we work together great as a team. Everything kind of coincides with each other. You look at the fact that we have to get things done, so because we have to get things done, that they do get done. We're not just doing it for ourselves, we're doing it for the audience. And we're doing it not only for the audience, but for ourselves. So that kind of works together, and it's really cool how that works. I love the way that everybody kind of has their own part, and everybody gets it done. You, know, you have your lines to memorize, you have your acting to get down, you have your steps in your cues and everything that you make sure you're not to miss, and I think it's great from the functional perspective of how functional we really are and how well everything works together as this one system and body of, um, of uh, advanced drama class. It's great. You'll find your names beside your places. Please, be seated. Your bench is still like it was in the movie. Uh, okay. Green, okay. scarlet, okay. mustard, it's your body. white, plum, and peacock. Well, Julia is our... 
assistant slash director. She does a wonderful job in helping this burger. She's a really good link from the students to the teacher too because she can yell at anybody she wants and it's not as offending and Miss Burger just lets her do the yelling and it works really well because you don't want to mess with her. Um, Nick has done a lot of kind of helping with stage directions a lot and controlling people's characters in different ways, good ways, that are helpful for an influence. Um, Dustin brings a lot because he sees the theater in different ways a lot of other people's, people's well, people don't because he kind of um, can tell ways that will catch the audience best. I have to get it delivered tomorrow. Oh, so that you have it at practice. Within the cast, there are three divisions that hold the play together. These divisions are known as committees. Each group specializes in props, costumes, or publicity. In this case, Cameron Robertson and Dustin Bell, members of the publicity committee, discuss the design of the t-shirts. I want both copies. I want both. When Sideline asked about conflicts within the cast, most elicited a response indicating that there have been few cases of major problems. However, they do happen on occasion. Although this is a very close cast, there are the inevitable problems among some of the members which are caused for tension from time to time. Generally, these conflicts arise from differing opinions as to how something should be dealt with. The directors may choose to have something done in a certain way, but sometimes particular actors might not agree with some of the director's decisions. The stalemate between those involved will continue until a compromise has been reached. People thinking that they should be directing when they're actually in the play, and that kind of just gets the whole people always talking and throwing out ideas without waiting for their turn to talk. It just gets kind of loud and hectic sometimes. Is the cast quote something from the script or just something we want to say? Oh, I call it cast quote. Yeah, I need to think about it. about you. What I would like is, first of all, you, your name, and then is your grade. No, no. I want to write bitches. <laughs> the cause of many of the conflicts comes from the long hours spent working on the play. The actors have to show up to rehearsal from 7 to 10 every Monday through Thursday evening for the first several weeks. Then, during the week prior to opening, or Hell Week as it is known by the performers, they are required to work on the play from 3 to 10 p.m. for four straight days. It is the most stressful period of the entire production. We're lucky this year, because in drama, advanced drama at least, there aren't a whole lot of people issues. Everyone gets along, because we all like each other, more or less. Um, but there gets to be, especially when you have to spend so much time at rehearsals, you have to spend hour upon hour upon hour with the exact same group of people, doing the exact same thing all the time. That's a lot of time to spend with each other. So little things start bugging you, like, I don't know, just random little things can start driving you crazy, and you can't let it bother you because otherwise it turns into this huge conflict, this huge drama, if you will, and it makes it a lot harder to deal with. Um, I tend, fortunately, I don't get a whole lot of conflicts. I'm pretty, like, I avoid conflict as much as possible, but my problem is I worry about people who are in conflict, so everyone's always fighting and I'm always worried, and so that's what's bad, but this year we're lucky because it hasn't been as bad as it could be. It's been a lot of fun, so. Since we're together for really long periods of time, it can get kind of stressful. And since we're as close as a family, it's kind of, you know, we have those tensions and there are times when we want to kill each other. But mostly it's, it's all good, it's fun. Um, as a conflict, I think we're working from, I mean, you have to look at us built, working off one another. I mean, I think you would look at that as a positive conflict because we're definitely a kind of striving to be a little better than the best. And I mean, I think you, you live off that. I mean, there's competition is what drives our society these days. You have a lot of um, different people working at to do different things, but then in the end, we're all trying to please, please the audience and please ourselves and each other. And when you do that, that kind of drives a competition, which is kind of a form of conflict, which I love about the class, because it made me learn from one day one day. The characters that the actors play are determined through auditioning. Whoever has an interest in playing a particular character can read a portion of the script for that person. At times, the competition can be tough, 
Final decisions are made by Ms. Brugger. Since there can only be one person playing a role, anyone else who may have wanted that role might become disappointed by the outcome. In Clue, double casting had to be used. In the case of several of the characters, two actors played the role instead of one in order to more appropriately accommodate the stage time for each performer. Well, there's always going to be the conflict of wanting to be the best. I mean, we have to audition for parts, and people may get upset when we don't get the part that we want or something like that. There's definitely seniority in the class, which might affect the, young, the younger students more, you know, in that they feel that it's unfair or something, but I think we're all close enough that we can get past that, but, you know, there's always going to be that tension and between competing actors. One conflict going on right now is everybody's, like, as I said before, is kind of pissed off at Dustin because he's been getting really arrogant, like, with his college stuff. Um, We've talked to Miss Berger about this, and she kind of made a speech in class, but he wasn't really listening, so I don't think that's been solved yet. Mostly, though, that's it. I mean, we've really kind of been getting along really well. Many of those interviewed claimed that Dustin Bell had been the person most likely to get on their nerves. At times, Dustin would take charge of a situation, or continually talk with other members of the cast, as the directors would be telling everyone something. Following the final performance, I asked Dustin what he thought the highlight of the play had been. As he responded, he was attacked by some of his fellow actors. Perhaps this was in retaliation for his attitude and behavior during the production. It may also have been just to get a laugh. Making out with Paul because, man, sorry, Rachel, but wow, damn. Oh, you made him do it. certain social constraints, but we usually don't follow any of those. You do have to read people. I mean, you do have to read, you know, see where someone's coming from with a line, because then you have to go in with your line and just, you know, work together on that. And um, it's difficult, but I suppose, you know, we are sort of this mass collective camaraderie of, of Thespians. In theater, actors interact with each other on stage. They must know what symbols are being used so that they will be on mark. The line spoken by other characters before them, or blocking, depends on what happened previously. A play is a long sequence of planned events that the actors must memorize. They develop the meaning of the symbols given within so that the show will be a success. Everything in drama even from the basics, you can say the lines, you can sound convincing, sort of, but if you really want to sound like you are the part, not like you're acting the part, you've got to use vocal inflections, like when you're asking a question, it goes, the, it goes up at the end of the sentence, like, you know, what are you doing? Or, I'm Ron Burgundy, like that, if you've seen Anchorman, just like that. And so you have to have all this inflection so people not only know what you're saying, but they also need to know what 
doing movement-wise. So your movements need to illustrate something normal. So if you're like an old man, you're not going to be standing like this. You're going to be like, you know, hunched over or whatever, because that's what old men do, most of them. And so the body language, as far as acting goes, like it's like, like probably 20% lines and 80% body language. In order for the audience to understand what is happening, the actors try to speak, move, and react in situations which would be appropriate in real life, as well as doing it in a way that the people watching will understand what is going on. In a sense, acting is symbolism in itself because you are playing a different part. You're playing someone completely different from yourself, and that symbolic representation that you have to present to people as not being Dustin Bell, but being as Professor Plummer a cop, or Nick Stockwell being a butler and stuff, that symbolism of representing not only yourself, but representing another character. And I think that's the biggest part about acting that you find in the symbolism in the relationship. I mean, you don't see... There's a lot of plays that use a lot of symbolism, but with Clue, it's very just straightforward. And, I mean, you just have your part, and that's funny, and it's comedy, and that's how it works. Because with comedy, you'll find a lot less symbolism. With your more serious plays, you'll find that. But I think the symbolic nature of our play is the fact that you're playing someone else and having to represent them instead of yourself. Ultimately, my cues are from, like, reacting to how other people are. Because, like, when I'm playing a character, I am that character. And so, like... It, it should be natural. It shouldn't look like you're acting. So, like, you should just, like, go with whatever you would do. So, pretty much, yeah, you just do whatever is natural, like, what your character would, how your character would react naturally to that situation. The bonds of advanced drama are some of the strongest anywhere. These students are quite literally the greatest cast Niwa High School has ever assembled. The year draws to a close as they all do. Twelve talented actors will leave behind an unfillable void. The friendships and memories will fade. The subsequent casts will come and go. And the 2005 advanced drama class will always be the group that had the best times. They've raised the bar by giving the best performances. It has been my honor and privilege to have worked with these amazing people and I hope that I will someday have the chance to work with them in the future. Because after all, there are no goodbyes. It's only until we meet again.